practice is so powerful. And what it is is a way of getting both patients and physicians hooked on their product, which is always the newest, most expensive product on the market. You don't see generic drug companies out there sampling generic drugs that cost three dollars a month. In any town USA you walk into a physician's office and you walk into a room that's usually a 10 by 10 room full of hundreds of thousands of dollars of samples. They're all the most expensive branded drugs. Uh, these are drugs that cost upwards of you know a hundred to three hundred dollars a month and the office is full of them. A physician prescribing the appropriate medication is not necessarily what the industry needs. What the industry needs, or a particular company, is the, the physician prescribing their medication. And this is the same issue that, that uh, applies to the rep speaking with a doctor, who the reps will say they're educating doctors, but of course what they're trying to do is promote their products and get the doctor to prescribe their product. Physicians will say that uh, the journal ads and the television commercials and the drug rep visits and the lunches and the pens and the pads and the pizza have no effect on them whatsoever. Uh, and they'll also say that uh, although it has no effect on them, that it most definitely has an effect on their colleagues. I knew as an industry insider that whatever I did affected my market share. All the literature that's looked at this shows, not, again not surprisingly, that doctors are influenced by promotion, that the more they meet with reps, the more legitimate they think the information they're getting from reps, the more likely they're prescribed uh, more expensive medication, for example, uh, more inappropriate medication. Increasing numbers of physicians are now breaking the silence around these issues. They're refusing to meet with drug reps and working to expose Big Pharma's influence on the medical profession. More and more doctors are becoming outraged with ceaseless mass marketing from the drug companies. Doctors and medical students across the country today took a stand. Doctors, medical students, and even former industry insiders are raising public awareness through the media while at the same time organizing within the medical community to challenge the industry's promotional practices. I'm working with AMSA, which is the American Medical Student Association. AMSA has 60,000 medical students from all over the country, and what they're working on is this big farm-free campaign, pharmaceutical-free, and they believe that uh, although drug companies are needed, drug reps are not needed. And one of the biggest problems has been that nobody was talking about it, that the, the hidden curriculum was accepting all these gifts okay because the teachers and everybody else were doing it but there was no other message and what we've been trying to do now is to get medical schools to explicitly and formally in the curricula themselves in the medical schools to talk to students about this and discuss the the ethical and professional issues involved in 1999 bob goodman created the nonprofit no free lunch to help educate healthcare providers the public and especially medical students about these issues we have a pledge for physicians as well as other health care providers to take, which essentially says that they won't accept gifts or other promotional materials, that they'll practice on the basis of the scientific literature. And many patients do email me asking me if there's a physician in their area that has taken the pledge. So it is my hope that eventually uh, that one of the things when the, when the managed care organizations have their list of doctors and says whether they're board certified and they speak English and Spanish and have they taken the no free lunch pledge, that there'll be a yes or no uh, and that for, for patients to choose them. Advocates for reform are also moving beyond this focus on individual physicians and patients to argue for more fundamental systemic changes. Well, in a sense, you can't blame the drug companies for doing what they're doing. These are, after all, investor-owned businesses whose fiduciary responsibility is to maximize the value of their shareholder stock, that is, to increase profits any way they can. I think my greatest criticism would come for the institutions that have allowed themselves to be corrupted by the drug companies. Sadly, it appears that our federal government has been really extensively co-opted by the industry. And I'm really not a person given to sort of cynicism or conspiracy theories about this sort of thing, but many people in Congress have said 
They've got a stranglehold on us. They get into all the Capitol Hills in every state in the country and, and, and in Washington, D.C., and they're spending billions of dollars trying to create legislation that's either going to protect the industry or to help promote the industry. That's one of the things that the industry does with its vast wealth. It buys influence and it also uses its wealth to co-opt any institution that might be expected to stand in the way of its drive for profits. So it co-opts, first of all, the U.S. Congress. It gives generously to political campaigns. It has the largest lobby in Washington. Nothing goes through Congress that it hasn't approved. So it begins with U.S. Congress, and then through the U.S. Congress and the administration, it controls to a remarkable extent the FDA. We need the FDA. The basic structure and the idea behind the Food and Drug Administration was in the public's interest, and I think the framework is there. What's missing is that there has been no oversight and Congress has allowed the industry uh, to become the FDA's partner in the development of new drugs. Some senators said the FDA shares the blame. One of my concerns is that the FDA has a relationship with drug companies that is far too cozy. The incentives that we have in our health care system and kind of health care as a business and all aspects of it, a, a business are really kind of perverse in the sense of, of, of how we should be thinking about the public's health. I think the public is becoming very disillusioned. They're no longer believing that this is a miracle industry in the sense that they may once have believed that. So in a sense, I think it's just a matter of the public starting to put this all together and put pressure on Congress. The influence of the industry on American medicine is, is far too extensive. And we've been naive about it. And we need to separate them um, and, and be clear-eyed about what the motives of, of industry are and what our goals are as a people for our public health. The relationship between physicians and the drug industry doesn't begin once you have your MD or you're out in private practice. It begins the day you hit medical school. Many medical students are given, quote, gifts on their very first day. It's interesting that those gifts are never things like a free dinner at a fancy restaurant or free tickets to a basketball game. They're not even pens or prescription pens. What they tend to be is things that look like they're about education. So they're a textbook or a, an ophthalmoscope that you can look through and say, oh my God, I'm going to be a doctor. And I think what that's about is establishing a relationship, establishing good feelings, and uh, a dependency and a sense of entitlement. I work really, really hard and nobody else is really nice to me, but these guys are really nice to me. And at the same time, the notion that we're all in this together. We're on the same side, the side fighting against disease. Unfortunately, the tactics used by the, the pharmaceutical salespeople rely on an entire system that is designed to manipulate what doctors understand about drugs. And basically, the, the salesperson is the last step in that. We also have to look at how clinical trials are designed and conducted. Right now, clinical trials are designed by the companies that are seeking to push a particular product in most cases. And unfortunately, they are frequently able to manipulate the design of the study or how the results are presented so that their drug comes out looking more favorable. That obviously is not a good way for us to accurately assess whether a drug is useful and safe. Before